I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim. My dad, Ty. My sister, Maddie. And our salty dog, Stella. We started our adventure refitting a Lagoon 450 before taking on the massive project of resurrecting a sunken 2021 Leopard 50. It's been one heck of a ride, but we're on this adventure to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. All right, party peeps. Uh, as you can tell, uh, we've been moving and reorganizing in the boat with other projects, and uh, so it's kind of a hot mess in here. But today is the day I have been able to carve out from work to be able to get back and do this manifold. Um, schedule 40 PVC, of course, is not gonna be the answer. And we're moving to some really heavy duty schedule 80 as a reminder. Um, this was set to go on a different wall. I was basically going to just um, put a new manifold system in, take the old manifold out and reuse that wall for some other equipment. Taking that apart and making room for this new manifold has uh, proven itself to be a bit challenging and it's kind of looking like, well, crap. So I'm just gonna gut everything out I'm gonna build the manifold from the start and install this first, and then I'll just make room for the other equipment later. But that's what I'm gonna do. It's probably gonna be in time lapse, but I'm gonna be putting together Schedule 80 PVC with this type of uh, cement. And um, yeah, hopefully today I will have the old manifold out, the new manifold in, and that sea chest over there installed and the air conditioning, at least on one side of the boat, running again. Let's see how it goes. It's a mess in here. Oh, this is heavy. One, two. <clears throat> Other little tour around here, we've got a sea strainer that's coming that will filter out large debris. But in the meantime, they have given us this foam, which you think would restrict the flow of water, but apparently does not. This is fuel cell foam, and it'll allow rapid transfer of water but obviously this will suck up all the little bits and what have you uh, to keep them from getting sucked into the system. So what I'm thinking is after I get the new screen that's coming, I think next week, what I'll do is maybe cut a small strip of this as a small filter that sits in front of that screen and uh, I'll save the rest of this. A lot of folks use um, 4200 or a marine sealant to put these fittings together. I don't particularly care for that. I much prefer a PTFE tape, um, which is quote unquote Teflon tape. This stuff, it also comes in gray from a different manufacturer, is super thick. And I do <clears throat> about eight to 10 rotations on it. And that gets me a nice, tight, waterproof, pressurized seal if necessary. But also, I can remove it and I can disassemble and service everything without pretty much welding everything together. This is a zinc. This, if we get any uh, dissimilar corrosion with electrolysis, with galvanic corrosion in the water, this zinc will slowly start to eat away. So if I see this starting to dissipate, that'll also be an indicator that we're having a galvanic corrosion issue. We should not, because we have a galvanic isolator on the boat, but just in case, it's a good precaution. So it helps if you put the tape on the right way and you pay attention to what you're doing instead of talking to the camera or while well, you're talking to the camera. <laughs> what I mean by that is the tape needs to go in the direction so that when you tighten the tape, the fitting down, the tail end of the tape is going with the flow and not against the flow so it doesn't bunch up the tape as you thread it in. And that will happen if you do it backwards, it'll show you.
threads. And then when I tear this, what you're gonna see is as I thread this this direction, the tape is this way. So it's pulling against and laying that tape down. I also leave just a little bit of the end exposed so that when I start the threads, it's easier to start. If you bunch all this up on top, that doesn't work. Nice and tight. All right, now this isn't an absolute must, but for bigger fittings, I like to use a wider tape. This is fine for kind of up to three quarter, maybe one inch, but going up to bigger fittings, use the wider tape. All right, I think I got all the plumbing fittings in and now I'm gonna work on the lid, which is just a gasket like this that is punched to match the screw holes. And then of course the label. Now they will uh, laser etch if you give them your logo. They'll laser etch your logo onto the uh, clear acrylic lid. I kind of like the smaller one that they put in this bottom corner so I can see all of the uh, water flowing on the inside and uh, we so so appreciate uh, the hooker pump crew supporting the project and uh, digging in and trying to help us with a better solution and um, thanking us for the video that we made and then the pump that we bought so we figured it was only right to advertise for them when you see inside of here because well they're the ones that made this possible so thanks again guys appreciate it All right, now these are stainless bolts in a stainless box, and that is great, but you know me, I like Tef Gel, and uh, I put that sh on everything. So I'm gonna put it on here just to make it easy to, to um, disassemble and reassemble when I take the lid off. I'm not worried about any galling, and we just have a little extra layer of a sealant and uh, just security for the longevity of this really, really nice sea chest. You do, however, have to remember to put all the parts in before you put the lid on. All right, I don't know if I've mentioned this already, but this last little piece here is an overflow or um, overpressurization device. They typically install these guys, of course, on fishing boats is what the original intent was. And if you're moving really fast through the water and water's getting shoved through the scuppers and pushing into uh, this box, it could overpressurize. So in an effort to get rid of the excess pressure, water, or air that could get trapped in on a boat that's planing, which of course ours will not. Um, but just in case, they wanted to make sure that we had this. This is a one-way valve that will just allow that excess pressure and water to flow overboard. I'm gonna tie this in uh, with a T to the condensation over uh, overflow. So I don't have to drill an additional hole in the boat. I doubt there will ever be anything inside of this um, little deal, but just in case, we have it installed. All right, I think that is just about going to do it. Uh, I've got everything seal taped in. The only thing I've got left to do is when I get down in there is going to be put this pump on and hook it up to the through hole. We're going to flood this box and see what happens. All right, I'm about to show you 
what I've been doing off camera and it's just plywood and gel coat. I like to coat every one of my mount boards in gel coat. I like gray, it kind of looks cool. Um, and normally I, I use a roller and create a little bit of texture and then knock it down. You'll see this one, I got a little heavy. Um, but new board for new manifold and I'm gonna have to take everything out of that space down below. And so what I've done here is created these yokes to hold the two inch tubing. And then I've created a vertical and horizontal support with another little yoke up top to be able to hold these stems here to take any load off of this vertical section. Okay, this is the exciting part. By the time I got everything handled today, it is now just after lunch and it's a warm day today and I have to completely shut down and drain the entire air conditioning system to be able to put this new manifold in. And uh, it's gonna get warm. So let's turn around. This is the old manifold board, obviously. I tried to take this thing apart, did not work out well. So I am going to completely remove this. I have made a new board here. The new manifold's going over here. The shower sump is going over here. The sea chest is going here and I'm gonna be using all new hoses during this. I'm gonna to try to set this up so you can see what's going on for the most part. Here we go. All right, Kim, I need you to shut down all of the air conditioning and turn off the pump. No! <laughs> no! No! All right. Much to my dismay. Yes, I know, much dismay. Okay. Here it goes. Air con off. Off. Air con off. Off. Shh. All and, the air conditioning is off. And now it's gonna start getting hot. What temperature is it in the salon right now? It says 74. 74. So that's comfortable now. Let's see what happens. Let's see how long it takes. It is now 12:15. Here, I'm gonna leave all the water in here. Then over here on the edge of the manifold, I've created, I put a drain in originally for servicing purposes. <clears throat> and look at that, it's coming in handy. Open, open, open. Let's drain the system. Ugh, sludge, that's gonna stink. Man, there is a lot of debris in that system. I'm just draining it into the bilge. This big black sediment came out. I think we definitely need to barnacle bust this as well. Alright. Alright, there's a whole bunch more. The hoses are disconnected and all the seawater's been spilled. So now I'm gonna pull this panel out. Got it. Oh. And hopefully you can get it in there. It's long. Yeehaw! Um, I am gonna need the other one with the manifold on it next. Okay, this one's gonna be fun. Ouch. I got it, Lico. Shit, it's like I planned it that way. <laughs> Effing sweet, man. Now that I've got this board right here in, this board is gonna be for uh, the shower sump and for an anchor board for some of the other uh, product that I've got going on in here. Now over here <clears throat> is this manifold board. And right here you'll see where it comes through here and there's a solid, solid uh, uh, support. I wanna bring that through, make a 90 degree turn, and come this way with 
uh, inch and a half hose. That is gonna be the emergency crash pump. So I'll be able to turn this valve on this section and everything that the system is pumping will go overboard when I close the air conditioners down. Um, that is the idea and you can see it's extremely tight. I didn't really have a whole lot of space between all of these fittings and it's really close to this wall and touching over here. So it's, it's a bit tight, but I think it looks good and I think it's gonna absolutely work. So I'm just gonna take my pencil and I'll mark around where that uh, pipe is lining up and then take the board out so I can drill the hole and then put the board back in so I can glue everything back in again. Sweet. Oh, hey, you're still here. Let's try it again. All right. Ready? All right. Yep. Lift her up. Down, down, down. All right. Let go. In. Holy shit. These things are no joke. That's going to just clear. So those dimensions are good. So we'll be able to take the lid off without it catching on the board. I'm super stoked. sealed in. What I didn't show you last night was I, when I put this board in, I sculpted these feet to match the shape of the hull, and then I got it within about an eighth of an inch, and then I bed it in a layer of Bostic, and that not only acted as like a cushion layer, but also an adhesion layer, so it had a, a cove joint down onto the hull. Yeah, I'm really freaking happy. All right, so you can see this is pretty chunky stuff. <laughs> Like light's horrible in here. There we go. You can kind of see it is a rubber braided and wire reinforced. That ought to do it. I need something to lubricate this hose fitting on here. Like lotion? That'll work. I suppose we could just use lube. Yeah, why don't you get to me some lube? Huh? Why don't you get me some lube? That's somewhat embarrassing, but perfect. <laughs> well, I don't have to put it on the internet. <laughs> lube. Right there. It'll just glide on. <laughs> uh, I'm sure, oh God, that's embarrassing. I'm sure Kim is not enjoying this right now, but... Keep your comments to yourself. All right, that's gluten tight. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, these barbed fittings, these barbed fittings right here are significantly tougher to get the uh, hose on. So, I might have to use a little extra lube on this. It's none of your business way, it's almost gone. <sighs> I 
That was a hard one. <laughs> Stop it. Hey babe. Yeah. May I have my crimpers for these? Yeah. I'm trying to keep track of how many times I've said, "Hey babe," and it's been, <laughs> it's been a lot today. I think she's made. I'm not go kidding. Ahead, go ahead. A hundred. A hundred trips. Oh. Here's this too. Oh, I'm not going to use that right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you are, cause I brought it. <laughs> switch tied in. I'm going to move this guy off to the right over here. Get out of the way. And the last thing I need to do before I fire this up that you guys haven't seen yet is I've discovered a small leak and it appears to be coming right here from the bottom of this little Dixie pump. So I don't believe that I sealed it properly. So um, I am going to hook up a drain hose because thought ahead and put a drain fitting in so just in case I need to service this I can actually close the the through hole down and open this drain that's over here on the left side of the uh, sea chest which I'll show you here in a second and drain everything down to the bilge and the bilge will pump it overboard and then I can take any of these plumbing fittings off without flooding and getting salt water and nastiness all over the inside of the bilge uh, I'm pretty proud of myself for that one. Let's see if I'm if it works out as well as I think it's going to. Are you ready? Hey babe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a small a, a small spool of three quarter inch hose out in the Ford cockpit. Would you mind grabbing it for me? Thanks, babe. <laughs> uh, she's she's a trooper, and she's got projects that she's working on. I keep interrupting her from what she's doing, so that she can come help me, so I don't have to crawl my fat butt in and out of this hole over and over again. Um, yeah. Slowly feed it to me. That's good. Stand by. I'm going to turn this off, close it, and then I'm going to take this ball valve right here, is my drain. And we should see. There it goes. That worked out pretty well. Okay. Now, because it's draining down to here, I should be down below this level where I can take this off. All right, done, off. Hey, babe. Yes. Can you turn the pump breaker on? And on. Okay. All right, here it goes. Well, that sounds like that's moving way more water than it was before. I'm afraid to turn it on high. 
that sounds like it's moving. Oh, I hear water rushing. Let's go outside and look. Again, like Kim said, without doing the bucket test, we're not gonna know exactly, but I think it's working out pretty good. Let's turn on these air conditioners and see what happens. Um, hopefully they'll cool down quickly. Okay, so what I've done is, is I have added additional lines onto the manifold for the other uh, air conditioners, and it has increased the amperage and it increased the flow. <laughs> I, think, I think we're gonna get it done. Holy crap. What do you think, oh Kim? Oh my God, that's so much water. So it does in fact add additional water flow when you reduce the back pressure. And I just need to make sure that we're not reducing the friction at all coming out of the boat. No, nope, it still looks like we're doing good. You can let him hang. So? <laughs> Don't want to get salt water in the boat. All right, let's look under here. So it looks like we're still getting adequate water flow. All right, guys, I think this just about wraps it up. We've got a functioning air conditioning system again, at least half the boat. I love, love this sea chest and the amount of un uh, unencumbered water coming in is absolutely great and it's going to be a really really big strainer so in case we get into any ugly water or uglier than it is here um, it'll hold a lot of debris before it starts clogging up i did um, as you saw put some additional hoses and run them overboard just to mimic the additional water flow and reduce the back pressure like the folks over at hooker pumps told us uh, would happen and absolutely we went um, almost double the water volume and this thing is pumping crazy amounts of water. So I'm really confident that even with the additional restriction, because I ran all of those hoses all the way up over the lifelines outside, and that's higher than any of the other air conditioners in the boat, that we should be doing pretty darn good. Um, I'm super excited about having these big, robust hoses and um, the Schedule ADP VC. Everything is just really coming together super, super nice. This is gonna have to get changed. I got a little heavy handed and I actually broke the fitting on the bottom of the, the little pump. I didn't break the pump, I just broke the bushing that um, I should have bought a better one to go inside of there. So other than that guys, I'm super stoked. If you like this content, is this, <laughs> if this nerdy kind of stuff is something that you dig on please hit that subscribe button hit like leave me a comment below um, no hating on the wiring yet it is temporary I will be putting better wiring in and tidying up the hoses and the lines we just wanted to bring the boat back down to a reasonable temperature this afternoon while I was working on it so I'm stoked we're gonna get into water flows and efficiencies next week and amperage draws on this little motor here I've got some super exciting news for that so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm glad it's done. I'm glad it's in. And I now can confidently plumb all the rest of the air conditioners in the boat and get this guy nice and cool. Thanks again for watching. See you guys next week and have a great rest of your weekend.